by looking at the signs. And I see all the planets hanging there. And there's this hierarchy. The sun, the other planets. And they're just rolling and rotating and revolving. Well, that's conflict. And that's conflict management. Every planet, in reality, doesn't want to stay where it is. Just wants to keep going. But there's this force that pulls them back so violently, so aggressively, that they keep doing the same thing. And that's conflict management. And every planet stays in its position and keeps the harmony. See, there must be a force in order for things to make sense. So, I looked at that and I looked at also how, just in the most, most, most micro state of existence, how particles work, appearing in pairs, only to disjoin, come back together, obliterate each other, and disappear, and then reappear. So who's responsible for this violence, you know? And that's the base, that's the base of existence. So I look at just these principles that, okay, when there is a force, then we have a system. I try to relate that to other things, such as religion. So in religion, most of us were in Europe, so we're more familiar with Christianity, right? So in Christianity, we all are familiar with the story of Adam and Eve. That's a very interesting one. It says everything. Because Adam and Eve, they lived in a garden with God. They still managed to have a fight. They still managed to quarrel with God. So it means living with God, you're not guaranteed peace either. There will be something that will go wrong. So we learned that from Adam and Eve, that just being with God is not enough. You are going to do something because that's the law of how things work. So... God, Adam, Eve, the most ever-loving God, ever-forgiving God, somehow he did not forgive Adam and Eve. He drove them out of the garden. Adam and Eve, I never heard they ever apologized. They just left. <laughs> you know, that's crazy. I was like, why must that conflict be created, even in the Bible? So, Adam, Eve, and God could not get along. So, it's not strange if I hate my neighbor. You have to understand that. It's about how we contain that, you see. So, and behold, Adam and Eve left the garden. They became the first refugees, the first displaced people, the first occupiers of another land, and so on and so forth. So, you see, displacement, refugee, everything is part of creation. God also is a part of that expelling people so and of course with that Adam and Eve were able to go on to start what we call a society and of course looking at how um, how that works and whatever happened after that trying to come up with with sense out of all this Try to see how in the religious aspect of conflict works. So it's very clear that everything is based on a kind of hierarchy. If you have to make sense of a situation, nothing can be equal. Everything transcends it to society. So just like you have, I started with science, with the planets, and how that works. Even when you stay with God, there's God on top, and other things are below. See. That's just the way to accommodate conflict. We have transformed ourselves um, into accepting the law of hierarchy as the fundamental principle behind conflict management. So, by that I mean, um, <clears throat> once you're part of a system, and when I say a system, this a system is anything that works. So. That's where it transcends into society. And the social system also obeys all the aspects of what we talked about. So if we base, in order to um, avoid conflict, we base existence on a kind of hierarchy formation. Therefore, 
the knowledge. I mean, this is why part of the cultural mapping program, um, a big part of it is called the education development program. Um, we really need to to change the way our perception for things, and we really need also to work on new definitions. New definitions. We keep using same words to describe new situations, which is part of the fundamental problem to, uh, of today. So, um, if we understand um, the hierarchical system, we see that everything that governs is opposed to change or rearrangement. You cannot change what God says. You cannot change what gravity is doing to all the planets. Just like when we have the society, there's the force also that controls. So we call that military force, police force. They're just forces. And then, of course, there's the individual in the middle of all that. So that I'll get to in a little while. So trying to get um, the society works in, in a hierarchical situation means we evolved also. Remember I said God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. And Adam and Eve never apologized to God. We can stay on that for a very long time. You know, people have to reflect on that. So, I think also, with my research, that even God had to evolve. I think when God made us, God did no mercy yet. I mean, that's the only explanation for that. If he knew mercy and forgiveness, he would have forgiven Adam and Eve. So, we have to know that it took God time also to evolve and to have... Um, to develop uh, understanding for maybe if he created us, <laughs> you know. So, I think on that notion, you see that, yes, of course, as time went on, we stopped the principle of survival of the fittest. So, we decided to form society. And society means we embrace the principle of hierarchy. So, once you decide that there is a king or there is a precedent, or there is a ruler. Out of things, immediately. So, it means I cannot be, if I'm not the ruler, if I'm not the president, I cannot act like him. So, that is the stress, where it all starts, what we call social unrest. So, that again, with the education development program, we need to absorb that. So, once you live in society, you have your place in the hierarchy of the existence of that society. So, the notion of equality, or the notion of freedom, the notion of um, aspiration, disposition, is very relative after that. So, people are in society crying, I want to be free. Free of what? Or free from what? You see, because you're already here by force. And you're already here being controlled by some force that keeps you here. And, of course, that goes on to the point where if you're not in tune with that, that starts to be what we call social constraints, and that accumulates. I'm trying here to, to explain what leads to social unrest, because, see, these things, like I say, they're not studied, they're not written. So we always wonder, how come there's fighting there? How come there's this going on there? Well, this is the reason, you know? So, everyone that's part of a system, you take, for instance, a car, that's a system. It's got wheels, it's got the steering wheel, it's got the seats, it's got the engine, it's got all these components that make it up to become what it is, a car. Now, what part of the car is more important? Because we already know, not all the parts of the car are equal. There's the little key, and there's the big engine. Somehow, the engine needs the key. You see, that's interdependence. And that's what, how a society can work. If the key stays there and claim equality with the engine, we got problems. It would never be equal to the engine. But, it can exercise its own importance by saying, well, without me, you can't start. That's more than enough to prove the engine 
is no more important than the key. So when people stay in society, I want to be equal. Equal in, one, in what way? You see, what are you doing that will point out how important you are? So it's this illusion of equality, illusion of freedom. You have to be part of something. And let me say another thing about equality. Equality is something you equate. You see, it exists only in mathematics or arithmetic. See, 6 plus 2 is 8. 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 times 2 is 12. You see, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Every time the relationship between 6 and 2 changes, the equality changes. So, equality is not in civil rights. It's not in people, it's in mathematics. If you want to in, introduce that in how things work, in how society works, that's very elusive. You see, equality in the philosophy of existence is how two things relate, not how the same they are, not how similar they are, it's about the relationship. So, if you want to be equal to something or someone else, what is the relationship? So, I think that can uh, settle something about those kind of notions that we struggle with in society and that we try to find, um, we never find really um, an answer to.